Heavenly Mark, I'd like to read to you uh, from a passage that uh, we have read over and over and over again as we've met together to prepare for this day. In Genesis chapter 2, it is written, uh, starting in verse 21, So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man. And while he slept, he took one of his ribs and closed his place with the flesh. And the rib that the Lord had taken from the man he made it into a woman and brought her to the man. And the man said, This at last is bone of my bones, flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. And the man and his wife were both naked. You guys are making a pretty, you're making a radical and a profound statement by getting married. By getting married uh, with a one flesh covenant from Scripture, you make a radical statement um, today. And I just want to reflect on three different ways, uh, maybe three different challenges and three different ways that when you stand here and make a covenant, with these words, one flesh, from the scriptures, uh, that you're making a radical statement. Today you're making, you're making a profound and radical sexual statement. You're making a political statement. You're making an economic statement. And in each one of those statements, as you seek to live out this biblical model of marriage, you get the opportunity to illustrate the gospel to the world, and you get the opportunity to be formed to be created as people formed by the gospel. Today, you make a sexual statement. The scripture says, and the man and his wife were both naked and not ashamed. Isn't it interesting how much your sex life has become a topic of conversation <laughs> between you and your coworkers and your friends? Profoundly so with those who are unfamiliar with a worldview that waits for a day like today. You illustrate the gospel today by entering into this covenant. Sacrificing to live lives of fidelity gives witness to the faithfulness of our God. To a God who is the Lord our God. The faithful God who keeps covenant and steadfast love with those who love and keep this covenant to a thousand generations. This is a God who sacrificed for us in the person of Jesus Christ to keep his covenant of steadfast love. To have his people exclusively and intimately for himself. To be known by his people as their God and as their Savior. Today, we give witness to the fact that it's only in this sort of intimate relationship with God that there's the possibility of new and eternal life. There's a, the possibility of rebirth that didn't exist before there was a relationship with this steadfast God. Your chastity until this day is a radical statement about lives formed by the story of this life. This Lord who set his love on his people and chose to give himself to them. Your faithfulness to one another will flow out of being formed by a story of the steadfast love of the Lord that never ceases. His faithfulness that never comes to an end, even when his people are unfaithful. You make a statement today about this gospel story, and it's a story that creates people. Previously in the scripture, it's in a similar uh, explanation of the first marriage, it says to Adam and Eve, go forth, be fruitful, and multiply. And certainly we're making a statement today that, uh, that in this union, by God's design and institution, this is the communion by which, the communion, by which in which we participate in recreating and co-creating new ones. Little ones. 
other ones who will be born into the same covenant and inherit this hope and this love. But fidelity in marriage is also one of God's designs for creating you as people. For forming you into the kind of people who are capable of supporting and carrying out the mission of the church, the mission of the gospel in the world, going into all the world and making disciples and baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. In a few minutes, you're going to say some words to each other that sound like in joy and in sorrow, and in plenty and in want, in sickness and in health, as long as we both shall live, and a promise to one another, talking about the commitment and the calling you're making. There are words that aren't far from other places in Scripture that say, say stuff like this. In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by, by various trials, so that the testing of the genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold, that perishes though tested by fire, may be found to result in the praise and glory and honor and revelation of Jesus Christ. This is... This is a commitment and a covenant that will form you as the kind of people that can be faithful to the call of the gospel. Today you make a political statement. The scripture we read said, Therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Today you illustrate that you are participating in something that you did not create, that you are more than individuals. And that you're participating in something that's not a man-made institution when you say, we become one flesh. It's something more significant than that you're, you're making a statement that you believe that there is something more significant than your individual freedom. And so you're giving up some of your freedom, some of your individuality, and taking on a new identity that includes you, but is larger than Today you choose to limit yourselves for love of another. Biblically one flesh union means you are becoming a part of a new body that includes both of you. A body of which you are a part. Your individuality, however, is no longer your first identity. As the scriptures say to a man and a woman, love one another as your own body. This institution is not primarily designed for your gratification and to serve your individual desires. This is a union which you are being called into to serve and display the gospel of God's redeeming love to the world. The scriptures say Christ loved the church and he gave himself up for her, for no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it as Christ is the church. It's an institution whose definition has vast political enemies. Yet it transcends political definitions. And the scriptures proclaim that the union of a husband and a wife are more than legal and more than social. It's more than a sexual bond. But that when a man and wife leave father and mother and are joined to each other, they become one flesh. And that is a mystery that points us to Christ and to his church. That those who follow Jesus are no longer their own, but that they're joined with and supported and encouraged and rebuked by a great cloud of witnesses. People who have gathered around them, like today, the church, the body that belongs to Jesus Christ, and all of those who will stand resurrected and redeemed with him on one day in the 